How's it going people? And um, thanks for joining me today. If it seems like this is from a weird angle, um, it's because it is. I've got like a phone holder, which is like a spider clasp and I've attached it to my mirror. So I'm parking up and I do a quick video. Um, I thought rather than do my usual rent videos, which are usually quite negative, I thought today I might just do like an experience video speaking about some of my experiences. And where better to start than, um, I said negative. And I'm gonna start by telling you a story about um, one of the first more serious um, deaths that I've been to um, and this was um, a double murder that I went to so I just said to disclaimer obviously it's going to be graphic to a certain extent I'm not going to be too graphic because I want to show some dignity and respect to the people who died innocent people um, and I'm pretty sure the person who did it had some serious mental health issues as well potentially and I believe that they've been charged now so during this story I'm not going to speak about any about any cases which are currently open I'm not going to be speaking about anything what I don't know to be factually true um, or what I observed, heard or saw at the time so this may be something that what the person said um, so because these cases are dealt with it's not going to be jeopardising the case it's not going to be putting blame on people I know we'll be changing any names if I can remember them which I probably won't but this is a few months back um, it was an afternoon and I, I didn't have a taser at the time so I was in the passenger seat working with another more experienced officer who's now a um, sergeant working somewhere else and we get a call it's a man who's contacted the police saying that he's killed his wife so and it was weird it's so weird we get nonsense just to every police officer and every emergency worker will know what I'm talking about here usually um, when you hear a call like that, it's nonsense. Someone's pulling your leg, that doesn't happen like that. Who kills someone then says, oh, I've just killed someone. But there was just a weird feeling in the air that day. And it was like, something's not right, something's strange. Um, but I couldn't put my finger on it. But my colleague straight away told me afterwards, he knew straight away this was the real deal. So we, there wasn't much information on the log. I've killed my partner. So we went around there as soon as possible. We get to this address. My colleague tells me he's going through the front. I see another car pull up with another teammate. They both go through the front. I go around the back of the property. We get around the back, I open the door and the door's open. And I start to walk through the property. And I'm walking through, I'm trying to think, okay, where could this dude be? We're in the UK, a lot of murders happen with knives, but it could be anything. At the moment, at that time, we didn't know. We're the closest unit. I don't know what weapon he's got and we don't carry firearms. So I'm going around there with my baton out, just in case someone pops out at me, because that's all I've got to defend myself. I walk around and I get to the bottom of the stairs, which is near to the front door, where my colleagues have gone in. They've gone in through the front. I've walked, I've gone around the back of the property and now I'm going up the stairs and I can't see them. Then I hear shouting outside. I run outside and one of my colleagues and my sergeant, who's now retired, have got a mal who's covered in blood pinned to the ground. And we're asking what's happened. And he's saying, they're in there, they're in there. There's another one in there. So straight away I'm thinking in my head, another one. So potentially there's two people who've been seriously injured or killed right now. Anyway, so I go back inside. So they've got him detained. So I go back in the house to continue my sweep of the house. I go upstairs into one of the rooms and I see a lady alone in a bedroom. She's got no top on. And it was sad, she was about my mum's age. So that really upset me. And literally every single place where you could get stabbed, there was a hole in her from her head. All the way down, the only place where she didn't have any holes were the bottoms of her feet. Um, she had defensive wounds where she tried to protect herself. Um, that was really sad. And then the saddest thing was you could see that there were children. That there were like children stuff inside the house. You could see children's coats downstairs and children's shoes. So I've started to walk around and I've looked at the um, some of the stuff which is around there. And um, looking through the bedrooms and I'm just thinking, I just hope to God that this other that he's speaking about if that lady's his wife who's passed away and I checked to Paul, she was gone. I let the paramedics in. But if the other people who he's on about, hopefully, I pray to God that's not a child. I, 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 hadn't had, I hadn't long had my own child, so literally that would have just, that would have really upset me. So I was looking around and I can look, I'm looking on tables and I can see knives folded out. And you could see that whether this, whatever's happened, the person outside who's claiming that he's done this, there's a certain level of preparation to it. Um, I walk back through and have another look at the lady as paramedics are trying to work on her but they're quite happy that she's passed away uh, not happy but they're, they've confirmed that she's passed away um, I've run downstairs and then I run back outside um, and I run I see officers running into the next door neighbour's house and I run in there 
and there's another lady inside there and she's been I can see a knife I believe I could see a hammer as well and she was alive when we got there but she was in a lot of pain and my sergeant and my other colleague they literally used every piece of first aid kit that they have and then some firearms officers get there our firearms officers inside the UK obviously unlike normal officers they carry um, um, pistols and carbines so proper firearms with proper bullets um, and they get trained to a high level of first aid so they specialize in that so with incidents like this sometimes they'll turn up to do first aid um, so they turned up and um, they, they used a lot of their first aid kit as well um, by the end of this we're all covered in blood trying to help these people but for the second lady I didn't get too hands on with her because there were so many officers trying to help them and I'm pretty sure out of nowhere I think it was some TV station came I think they were jumping on with the paramedics at the time and they came and they started recording later on I think they deleted the footage because they said it was too graphic for them to use um, so that was that so I've dealt with one lady who's passed I've dealt with another lady who's passed I've walked back outside and you can't cross contaminate so luckily I didn't get hands on with the guy who's getting arrested because you don't want to put any any evidence from the lady who had to check the pulse when he passed away onto him and you don't want to spread any of that to the lady so I couldn't get hands on with anyone else I had to just kind of observe so I've walked back outside and I can see him sitting there on the step and he looks oblivious he makes some utterings about how he may or may not have taken some drugs but he just doesn't seem right my mate arrests him they put him on the side of the road and we're waiting for a van we don't want to put him in a normal seat we want to put him inside a clean van so there's no cross contamination when we take him to custody we don't want any of his fluids to get anywhere else or because effectively he can we, we, we don't want to lose the evidence if that makes sense um, has he sitting there on the step um, one of the ladies I can't remember who's, which party it was their family members start to turn up and this is, this is what really upset me it broke my heart at the time you've got a young man who's probably about my age you've got the lady there who's passed away both the ladies were older both around my mother's age what, one lady was a little bit older and he can see this guy sitting there covered in blood and he knows that something inside him has told him that his mum has been hurt or badly hurt or killed and then he sees one of the ladies come out on a stretcher and he knows that that's his mum because it's coming from his mum's house he can see female clothing and he starts crying well he gets angry and he starts crying and naturally he wants to attack the man sitting there waiting for the van we're trying to keep him safe because we have to keep the suspect safe and the victim safe the best way we can he's trying to attack this man he's filled with rage and his heart's broken and he's scared and he's confused and I'm having to grab this man and wrestle with him and hold on to him and push him away um, from going near to his mum who's passed and also from even approaching the person who may or may not at that time have killed his mum so I'm pushing him I'm having to fight with him and fight with his dad any other time you'd arrest someone but obviously not in that situation and it just that that's what I think that's probably what upset me the most um, I think the officers who were there they managed to keep the second lady alive until she got on the on the ambulance on the way to hospital where she later passed away and it's just crazy with jobs like this I remember sitting there but you don't have many officers inside the UK there's a real shortage of, shortage of officers what should have happened is it should have been us going from there and then going back to the station and probably getting changed because we were covered in blood and having some cups of teas and then probably going home early after writing our statement just standing there at the back of the scene because you have to keep the scene secure make sure no one goes in or off there just standing there on the scene for hours and hours and hours just thinking what the heck just happened and you've got your mates there looking after you and you know you're trying your best to keep your head up but it's just a, such a messed up situation to be in for everyone involved and you're thinking if I feel like this how does this kid feel and I'm having to push him away and I'm having to tell him to go to hospital trying to keep his head up because I can't bring myself to tell him that your mum's probably not going to make it the really tough situation and with situations like that you would you just wish you could a lot of the people who I deal with unless they're criminals or repeat victims I don't really get to see them again it would just be nice to be able to see that person again and just find out how they are and just like kind of say sorry for how I had to act on the day I, treat, I treated him with a lot of respect but how much respect can you show someone when you push it when you're pushing them away 
from being able to deal with their mom who they can see on a stretcher or to be able and, and you can see he just wanted to be able to look after his mom and get justice for his mom but I needed to secure the scene I had a job to do you can't come in I had to push him away and he was heartbroken hard working family they'd worked hard their whole lives I don't believe we had any dealings with them in the past um, and something bad like that happened I believe there was an element of mental health I know that the individual who was the suspect he was arrested and charged but I won't go into that I won't tell any names or say where that was but I thought I just might say, share that story today um, that was the first um, incident of murder which really really kind of affected me and it put me in a bad mood for weeks and weeks and weeks after that incident I remember dealing with people I was dealing with two um, two young lads probably my age are inside this car and they're parked in WLOs and I like to speak to people quite politely I walked over to them and said this was about three days afterwards I walked over to these lads and said if you don't mind just like moving your car just so the deliveries can get in and this guy just turned around to me just dead in the face gone fuck off go away get lost what you here for and usually because I understand certain people have had bad experiences with the police. So usually, first of all, he's failed the attitude test already, but usually I give people about 30 seconds grace before I start telling them what to do, if that makes sense. And I know that seems not that long, but when someone's already swore at you, giving them 30 seconds of continuing to be polite to them, when they've already swore at you, when they're in the wrong, that's plenty of time. Um, so he swore at me and I've continued for 30 seconds saying, mate, I just need you to, to move your car so you can get the thing, so they can get the deliveries in, da, da 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 For about 30 seconds, trying to be very, very polite. And he's not having it, just being very, very rude. And effectively, I've just kind of, I haven't lost it, but just, I think probably just the stress of that situation happening so, so recently. Um, and this person's attitude, the lack of respect I understand people have had bad experiences with the police Before I joined the police, I had bad experience with the police Just that blatant disrespect Just thinking to myself, and I'm looking at this dude He's a young Asian dude The lady who had just tried to save her life And my team had literally done everything they can to save their life um, Was um, a, a young Asian family And I'm thinking to myself The amount of disrespect you're giving us when literally three days ago we were doing our best to try and save someone who could have been your family member it could have been your mom in any other circumstance it could have been anyone it was like a spray of the moment attack it came out of nowhere it could have been and you just treat me with this disrespect and without swearing or being rude i've told him robustly that he needs to move his car now or um it, it, it will be moved by me and he'll be removed from the vehicle and he can either give me his details for a ticket or it can end up at the station and I don't like to have to speak to people like that, but sometimes these things come and it's a case of, I had to speak to my sergeant afterwards to say, Sarge, I'm just not, I need to, I spoke to my partner, I spoke to my sergeant, and I spoke to both of them separately. My, 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 my missus just in a more like one-to-one -one basis and my sergeant separately just saying, since that thing, I just, I've, I've just, my patience has gone to zero. My patience has gone to zero because at the back of my head, I'm thinking I'm dealing with this nonsense, which I've got no choice but to deal with when there's serious stuff going on all around me. And there's serious people, and, and there's people who really need my attention, and I have to deal with these idiots. And so some people look at police officers and think, that police officer is an absolute dickhead. And you know what, sometimes we are, and I probably was a bit of a dickhead on that day. I acted within the law, and that kid, in fairness, that kid was a dickhead way before <laughs> I was. And I acted well within the law, and well within what I needed to do. But it was just a case of me, just a case for people to think, sometimes if a police officer is being a dick, understand that some of the stuff that police officers firefighters people who have joined the army um, nurses doctors paramedics some people some of the things that we have to deal with it can make us a bit sharp and it can make us a bit rude at times and to that guy if i said anything was out of line which i don't believe i did i do apologize for that but these things do affect us we're not robots when you say f the police and all cops are bastards and all that type of stuff Nine times out of ten, that's not going to affect me. It's going to be like water off a duck's back. But that one time after I've been to a murder, that one time after I've just been assaulted, that one time after I've been racially abused for the tenth time, for that one time after someone's literally spat in my face for no reason, for that one time when a, 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 a group of young black men have walked up to me and said, you're a coward for being a police officer. How dare you be a police officer? You're Babylon, you're disgusting, you, you betrayed your race. That one time when you say, all cops are bastard, I might just speak to you in a more robust way than he usually would but that was just a little story um 
anyone who wants to comment on this, speak, please speak respectfully about the people who were involved. It was a really sad experience for me, and I still remember it now. Some days I wake up sad thinking about that now. Um, and yeah, tell me what you guys think. Tell me if you feel like emergency services get enough help with mental health. We did have a debrief afterwards, which was which was the best that we can do. The police in the UK didn't get very well funded, but the lady who came to the debrief with us, she did a good job trying to look after us. But um, below, share me some of the experiences that you've been through, whether you're part of law enforcement or a police officer, or whether you are um, a civilian. Tell me what you've been through and tell me how it affected you. But thank you for joining me today. Um, hopefully I'll have more videos soon. Peace.